about a, uh, a project, uh, it's an opportunity to have a real impact in the lives of some culturally and linguistically diverse and marginalised children and young people uh, in Melbourne. But first I just wanted to give you a bit of a background on what 100 storey building is. Uh, so, as a teacher, um, my days as a teacher in Footscray, um, I witnessed firsthand uh, the incredible challenges that uh, young people from marginalised, disadvantaged backgrounds faced uh, in achieving the same sort of levels of success as their peers. Uh, there's currently an average two year gap uh, in literacy levels between those disadvantaged students and uh, the, the most advantaged students. That's two years. Um, of difference not only in reading but also in writing uh, and in their oral literacy development as well. And I just want you to stop and think about it at the moment, what sort of impact that can have in the confidence, um, the, uh, the types of opportunities that these children might see themselves having in the future and how that affects what they actually do end up being able to succeed. Uh, in Braybrook, one of Victoria's most disadvantaged uh, suburbs and one of the most culturally and linguistically diverse suburbs as well. Uh, there's a primary school, local primary school, that has just 125, uh, 24 students and over 22 language groups that are spoken at home. Uh, this is a school that has huge amounts of marginalisation um, and challenges for these students and it is really indicative of the type of uh, uh, cultures that we, we work with. Uh, 100 Story Building is targeting and addressing the needs of these students uh, through our engaging and our authentic writing programs uh, and through uh, offering them the kind of opportunity to develop their creative voice and take uh, the creative risks uh, that they sometimes don't see as being uh, there for them to take. Um, the building itself, for those who haven't actually been to Footscray, um, we, I know the name might suggest that we are a 100 story building, that we have 100 stories. It's not 100% true. Uh, we, do, uh, we don't have 100 storeys above ground, the council wouldn't let us do that, so instead we have 100 floors underground. There's a trapdoor at the back that goes down to the 90 floor, 99 floors below us, uh, and it is, as one student put it, uh, a building with a very tall bottom. Um, <laughs> this space uh, is also a space where we focus on writing activities uh, that help open up those sorts of opportunities for children. We have short and long term programs. We have programs that are uh, sort of based on uh, exploring uh, their creative voice. Um, we have uh, writing masterclasses. We have uh, lots of different programs. And one of those programs in particular I want to talk to you tonight about. Uh, that's this. Early Harvest. It's a literary journal created by children and young people. Uh, you see up here three students um, from uh, is, uh, from Braybrook and from Footscray. Uh, Jennifer, and Nomi and Miab. Uh, all three of them come from uh, backgrounds uh, other than English. Um, and all three of them learnt English when they arrived in Australia. Jennifer from Vietnam, uh, Nomi from uh, Myanmar and Miab from er Eritrea. Those three work together with ten other children from grade five and six um, over three months as the editors on this literary journal. Uh, they went through the whole process. They sent out a call for submissions after coming up with the theme. Uh, they reviewed all the submissions that came through and wrote feedback letters after they'd chosen the content. Some of the feedback letters went to adult authors um, who hadn't quite cut it uh, in their writing. Uh, the theme of this, by the way, is zombie sci-fi because they couldn't decide between the two themes. We brought in professionals from the publishing industry to work through each step of the process with them. Uh, and that included the boring stuff like editing. They learnt the secret code of editors and spent hours marking up uh, the stories because they were working on something that was authentic, because there was this outcome at the end of that they understood there was an audience there that was going to be reading this magazine. They understood and could make those connections between the literacy skills they were learning in school and what they could actually be used for. Uh, this gave them a space where they could actually feel their own agency and what that gave uh, was an energy to the program. It was driven in the early days by us. Uh, as we moved towards completion of the magazine, it was their energy and intrinsic motivation and passion uh, for seeing this thing through that really uh, put it forward. Uh, this magazine and program uh, doesn't operate on energy alone. Uh, the project itself uh, is something that is uh, uh, hopefully uh, going to be able to be supported um, on its own, but at this stage it does need your support. Um, for $10,000, we can run these workshops for Early Harvest uh, with another 12 young editors uh, from around the inner west. Uh, we can publish the magazine. For $20,000, uh, 
Uh, we can not only do that, we can reach further out to schools in places like Sunshine, Derrimut, St Albans, Deer Park that don't have the opportunity to come every week uh, but can engage in submitting their stories to the magazine and go through that process and understanding with support uh, to developing something that can be read by a wider audience and feel that sense of achievement through that as well and make those connections. I, I'm, I'm asking you to make a financial contribution today, uh, but I do understand uh, that you want to know that this donation can have a lasting impact. For a project like this to be sustainable, there needs to be a long-term plan. Uh, and that includes more than just a one-off donation. A 100-storey building is a social enterprise. Uh, and to support our free programs like Early Harvest, we run a series of products and services. Uh, we have writing holiday workshops, master classes for adults, and we do consultancy work. Uh, and it, in this financial year, those trading uh, products and services have raised more than 20% of our income. In five years' time, that's going to be over 50% of our income. So a donation today to Early Harvest can also see this project being part of our self-sustainability. Uh, if you want to ensure that uh, all children, regardless of their language backgrounds or cultural backgrounds, uh, have the same opportunities that thrive in our community, then please make a contribution to Early Harvest. With your support, we can be a transformational force in the lives of these young people. Thank you.